Um, okay, yeah, my name is Julian. I work for a software company here um, in, outside of London called Syncom. Um, it's an enterprise software company, but primarily what I work on is a language called Smalltalk, which some of you may have heard of. Um, my background is in software development, or at least has been for the last 10 years or so. Um, and uh, a lot of that has been working in Smalltalk, so I'm now working for a company that uh, create their, or um, develops a Smalltalk environment. Um, I'm Canadian, not American, just in case you've got any ideas. Um, and uh, as I just said a few minutes ago, I'm talking about uh, fundamentally here collaboration. Um, so, well, I kind of gave you the introduction already. We we looked at, we wanted to look at um, how how much more, how much further you can go with collaboration, basically. Um, and what I'm going to suggest to you is that software development, as we currently practice it, although we think of it as a team activity, is maybe not as collaborative as we think it is. Um, before we go any further, I just want to show you this quick video clip. This is from uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, some of you may have seen it before. It's a sort of a humorous clip, but I want you to just look at it and think about how the people are interacting with the environment, how they're collaborating with each other, um, and then We'll talk about a few other things and come back to this in a moment. Okay, guys, uh, these eggs have given us a lot of trouble in the past. Uh, does anybody need anything off this guy or can we bypass him? Uh, I think we really need something from this guy. Oh, uh, he, he needs those devout shoulders? Doesn't, isn't he a paladin? Yeah, but that'll help you heal better. I'll have more mana. Christ. Okay, uh, well, what we'll do, I'll run in first, uh, gather up all the eggs so we can kind of just, you know, blast them all down with AOE. Um, I will use Intimidating Shout to kind of scatter them so we don't have to fight a whole bunch of them at once. Uh, when my shout's done, uh, I'll need Anthony to come in and drop this shout too uh, so we can keep them scattered and not to fight too many. Um, when his is done, Bass, of course, need to run in and do the same thing. Uh, we're going to need Divine Intervention on our mages uh, so they can uh, AE. Uh, so we can, of course, get them down fast because we're bringing all these guys. I mean, we'll be in trouble if we don't take them down quick. Uh, I think it's a pretty good plan. We should go pull it off this time. Uh, what do you think of it? Can you give me a number crunch real quick? Uh, yeah, give me a sec. I'm coming up with 32.33 <coughs> uh, repeating, of course, percentage of survival. A lot better than we usually do. Uh, all right, John, ready, guys? Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, I want to talk a little bit about sort of types of online collaboration. We've, you know, we've come a long way since the days of email, obviously. Um, and there's a lot of people out there doing what they're calling collaborative tools. So there's stuff, you know, it may be the sort of simple end like Twitter. Um, but I would say that Twitter is fairly superficial. You know, you have a lot of connections. You're not really engaging deeply. Um, and it's probably you're doing a lot of things at once. You're not necessarily connected to the one thing, so you're not all working on the same task. So it's you know it's collaboration, it's interaction, but it's a fairly mild form. Um, Facebook might be can be a bit like that, depending you know if you have 1,500 friends, it's probably pretty similar. If you have 20 or 30 friends, it's probably a bit more intimate, a bit more closely connected. Um, something like Basecamp. Are people familiar with Basecamp? So Basecamp is basically an online uh, project management collaboration tool. Um, but again, I think it's fairly, um, it's fairly basic, really. You're, it's, it's still asynchronous. You're not really collaborating. You're not collaborating that tightly. It's just a way of, you know, it's sort of paperwork generation, right? It's not, um, 
it's not an intimate form of collaboration. Um, so, next, there we go. Um, what's different about this form of collaboration? How are these people interacting, how they're interacting with the environment and how they're interacting with each other compared to some of these other online collaboration tools? It's real time. It's real time, yeah, absolutely. Real time is one. Talking. What's that? They're talking. They're talking, okay. So there's a, a, a higher bandwidth of communication, perhaps, yeah. Absolutely, they can exactly they can see what they can see what the other people are doing. They can see their status. Anything else? They rely on each other. They they're supporting each other. Yep. Any other thoughts? Okay, so I have a couple of others. What's that? They're having fun. Absolutely. Yep. Exactly. Um, so, so when we've talked about some of these, uh, one of them I think is that it's a very fine-grained collaboration. So they're not just working on the same task, or sorry, they're not just working on the same project. They're actively working on the same task. They are, you know, they're doing. They may be doing different. They may have different roles in that, but they're all focused on exactly the same thing at the same time. Um, someone said real time. I haven't really put that up because I'm not focusing on that in the talk. But that's absolutely a good one. Um, immersion. I think we sort of touched on that, but um, this idea that they are. You know, they are there in the now in that environment. And when Leroy goes running in, you know, they don't, it's not, it's not like, oh, well, you know, there goes, there goes a character. They're, they're feeling, you know, we need to get in there after him. They are, they feel like they're part of that environment. Um, the idea of transparency of feedback. So that was the idea that you can see what other members of the team are doing. You can see what their status is. Um, and you can get all that in, in real time. Um, and then the idea of, of flow. Um, that they can change very easily from one task or one mode to another. So uh, they're you know, <laughs> discussing and planning, but they can change in an instant, and the whole team can move off and be running in madly instead. So I wouldn't necessarily say that that's a good example of you know, they didn't really successfully collaborate to achieve their goal, but you can see that the type of collaboration that we're talking about is fundamentally very different from what these tools are currently delivering. Um, so I, I think that uh, Agile development focuses on a lot of these same things. Um, so, you know, fine-grained collaboration, we've got uh, ideas like pair programming, working two people working together on the same uh, task. We've got um, having the customer on site so that you're working more closely with them and collaborating. Um, in terms of immersion, um, you know, Agile probably itself doesn't focus on that that much, but um, software development, I think, generally has a lot of that as software developers getting immersed into it. Um, and I think the pair programming um, is an attempt to expand that so that two people are being immersed together into the environment instead of separately. Um, the transparency and feedback, um, you know, there's daily stand-ups as an open workspace. There's a lot of the Agile stuff is about communication, sharing status, and keeping everybody up to date on what's going on. Um, and then flow and transitions very much. There's frequent releases. There's um, continuous integration. There's a lot of things to get that you know, changing states as often as possible. So I think there's a lot in common there between the goals that are trying to achieve in Agile and, you know, the kind of collaboration that you're doing in online gaming. Um, Kent Beck talks about extreme programming as turning all the dials up to 10. And so what we wondered was whether we could turn some of them up to 11. Um, and so we started with this simple idea. What if we allowed a group of developers to simultaneously develop on the same running application? Um, now, this touches on Smalltalk slightly. Do people, have anybody used Smalltalk? Got a couple of hands there, okay. So, or Lisp, anybody Lisp? More Lisp, okay. Some of the same people. So, these languages have in common that they use an image environment. And um, basically, the code lives in this image as live objects. So, the idea of a source file is, is sort of quaint in that you don't you don't have this textual representation of the code, or you do, I suppose, but in the application when it's running, the code is really living as live objects. You can change them on the fly while the application is running, um, and the behavior of the application will just change. And so that led itself quite easily to what we were trying to do. And our engineering team was actually working on a um, web-based IDE, and so it was quite natural to extend that to say, well, we can have several developers using web browsers to connect to the same image using this IDE, and suddenly they're all working on the same code on the same application. Um, 
And so we thought it would be interesting to see what would happen uh, if we could kind of cram them all into that space and see if it blew up. Um, and so we started running some workshops with this and surprisingly found that it didn't blow up as much as we thought it would. Um, and so we've been kind of refining that over the, over the last year or so. Uh, 